It is Monday, October 17th, 2022. We're here at the John Hogan meeting room and John is not with us tonight, but he's on vacation, so that's okay. Uh, the rest of the board, aside from Callie, is absent as well, but we've got Don and Ray. We've got our friends from uh, Orca Media and Sasha. And in the gallery, we have Stefan. So a few people I thought I would announce this all. And our wonderful PD person that I owe her a motion name. Susan Beckman. Susan, thank you for coming, Susan. All right, um, so we're online as well, and there does not appear to be anyone looking uh, for public comments. So let's go ahead and uh, do the health insurance. Sasha, so did you hear from John? Yes, I, I think Chairman Ford the email to everybody. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, he approved it and said they just do the motion for it and sign it. All right. Um, who would like uh, to do the motion? Just, uh, I'll do it. I'll uh, move uh, to renew the current health insurance policy, Blue Edged Business uh, CDHP1. I'll second that. Thank you, Ray. Uh, any further discussion, questions? Done? Okay. I have That's none. Good. Uh, all in favor? Motion, vote aye. Aye. All right. All right. All right. All right. So, um, good evening, sir. Are you here for public comment? Yes, I am. All right. We had uh, moved on because no one was here. So, if you don't mind stating your name. Oh, my name is Dexter LeFevre. Dexter LeFevre. All right, sir. You may go ahead. Thank you. I live in Middlesex and I'm running for state senate. So, I'm on a mission of out. Introducing myself to select boards throughout the district, which is all of Washington County, plus Braintree, Orange, and Stowe, thanks to redistricting. I know a couple of you guys already, so nice to see you again. Hey, Don, on the boards. Don and I worked together on the fire station. All right. Way back when. Probably, yeah, way back when. Uh, there's your fire chief right here in the town. Did you build it? Step on crap. Did I build it? No, I did the engineering. Oh, you're the guy. <laughs> the uh, septic system. How's that now? Pull it up. Good. That was. Yep. That was. A, I have a question. Somebody about that. that we did a pretty uh, low budget uh, stormwater system over there, so it's always full. The <laughs> septic tank. No, the tank for the water from the floors. Oh yeah, yeah. That fills up quick. Yeah, that's a. And so, I'm on. Tom Martin and you probably know Ray. So, yep. And then I'll raise Sasha, it sounds like you know Susan as well. So. Yep. Susan's my neighbor in Middlesex. All right. So Susan, so what do you have to say about it? <laughs> He's a, a diehard uh, candidate. All right. A good neighbor? He's a good neighbor. All right. That's, that's the most important. <laughs> Susan's blueberries are better than my blueberries. <laughs> yeah, but your tomatoes are fine. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I mean, my platform is kind of simple. Like three basic things I'm focused on is like affordability, um, being a, bridging the partisan divide, being a nonpartisan voice in legislature, and then also just trying to promote sensible policies uh, in all areas, especially energy, healthcare, education, environment. The list goes on and on. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, so you know I'm engineer, I guess, because I did the fire station site plan and septic. Um, but I've got a farm in Middlesex too. I grow industrial hemp and growing root vegetables this year. Doing a little cooperative thing with three other families. Doing so it's a little big this year. So one of the things that we're I think facing throughout the state um, here in Moortown as well um, is affordable housing. Um, and there seems to be a, a lack of rentals more than ever. Um, one of the things that I've done just recently um, is went on, you know, went looking for a rental in Moortown. I don't thankfully need one, but just trying to find a, you know, see what's out there. There's really nothing available. But then I went to Airbnb to find out if I could come and stay in Moortown. And there's a lot of opportunities to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I understand we, uh, you know, people have properties and you can certainly do what you want, but 
Is there a happy medium there or something that, because there's a lot of properties of, of being taken out of the rental, the long-term rental, um, and put into Airbnb because it's more profitable. And, and I understand someone owning a home, I mean, the taxes and everything. So I, I understand why people are doing it, but what can we do to uh, maybe bridge that gap? So that's interesting. So I think the housing crisis is a perfect storm of many, many factors. Um, COVID sort of put, accelerated that, uh, worsened it. Another thing, again, this is sort of as a result of COVID, is the ACRA funding. So there's an influx of federal money that the state is using to build state buildings that's sort of sucking the workforce away from residential housing towards government-funded construction and providing a shortfall of, I'm not sure how to classify them, but build house builders, uh, contractors, builders uh, as a result. So I think that could be a temporary thing. Once that big influx of ARPA money goes away, mm -hmm. then the, the workforce will be available to build lower cost residential housing um, and maybe overcome the loss due to, to the increase of second homes. Um, there's a lot of other things at, at play too, like government subsidies um, for uh, low income earners that support um, uh, rental properties, mm -hmm. um, drives the cost up as well. So if you can afford a $500 a month um, apartment, but then you get a $500 subs subsidy suddenly your apartment's worth a thousand dollars a month. So that drives the cost of, of uh, the affordability up. And then I guess just affordability in general um, does drive up the cost of rental properties. Taxes are high. Uh, that's a result of high education costs, a result of high insurance costs, both property insurance and health insurance in the educational sector. All these things contribute. So I started by saying it's a perfect storm of a number of things. And I, and I think it is. Most of them are market driven. I mentioned a few things that are initiatives uh, that the state sort of puts into the system that drives the cost up too. And I think that that's a way, backing some of those things off is a way to increase affordability, make lower cost housing uh, something that builders will build and also uh, more available. As far as the Airbnb thing, I, uh, I have, two properties. I have a, my farm in Middlesex and I built a retirement house at Sugarbush. Uh, both properties have uh, like an apartment, a one bedroom apartment. So we had the apartment in Middlesex in Airbnb, Airbnb for a long time. And, and we had a neighbor that approached us looking for housing and we took it off Airbnb and made it available uh, to her and her daughter so they could stay in the U32 school district. Um, and it's not, the, the, the income's the same. Uh, we don't have to clean it regularly, but we also don't have, it gets right. a lot it's of use. A lot of payoff, it's right? used a lot more heavily, yeah, there's trade-offs. But it, you know, financially it was a break even. And then our property at Sugarbush, so I guess we, uh, you know, we, we did rent that for a while. It was pretty steady last winter, it's new. So uh, last winter was the first chance we had. The rentals were steady. The summer it just died. Fourth of July, I had no bookings for the summer. I'm like, what is up with this? So I, I did a search for something that would match my availability for that property. And there were 94 units available in Warren for that for Fourth of July weekend. And I said, well, no wonder I, I don't have bookings. So we just took it off for the summer. Uh, so it's not producing income now, now at all. It's, it's kind of unfinished and it wouldn't, at the rates it gets, it wouldn't be affordable. Gentlemen, any other questions for Mr. Lafay? You know, Hector, uh, just wondering about the, uh, you know, the the Act 250 permit process and how that affects these uh, housing market as well. 
I mean, uh, I've seen it where uh, projects get 10 years to this process. Is, is there anything, any movement towards improving that to, to, to expedite, to help, to help these builders get some uh, more income or affordable housing out there? Yeah, so that's one of the things that drives the affordability up, and it's regulation in general. It's not just Active 50. It's the water waste water permits yeah. have a cost associated with them. Public safety, you know, um, the fire prevent fire prevention plumbing permits are really expensive, um, and all those things drive up the cost. Uh, they also extend the time required to get a permit. So all those things contribute, and I think that there there is probably things that can be done uh, statutorily to make it easier. Um, the one thing about Active 50 is that um, there's a lot of uh, exemptions to Active 50. So like a smaller development in Montpelier or even, even in this town, if it's less than 10 lots, um, there's no Active 50. So, you know, so it would only apply to larger subdivisions. It doesn't apply to like someone converting a house from a uh, one family to a two family wouldn't okay. wouldn't trip back to 50. So unless it's bigger lots, but I think the process, one thing I don't like about the active 50 process is it's largely political, um, you know, and, and the different commissions in different parts of the state sort of act differently depending on the politics of the region, which is a little, little weird to me. I, I like to see it be less political and more objective. Yeah, it certainly should be. Don, do you have any? Uh, uh, no, I have no comments. Stefan, you have anything quick? No, I'm all set. All right, well, we'll let uh, Sasha has for the representative. All right, Mr. Favor, anything else to uh, no, say? I just thank you for my time. I've got a website, dexter4vt.com. So if you or anybody wants to reach me or find out more about me, you can do that there. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. All right, very good. Thank you for so That's one of the little cards right there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we got one for everybody. Thank you. Hot off the press, Susan. <laughs> See ya. See ya. All right, so um, Stefan, why don't you roll on over? We got the budget from the fire department. And I think we have in front of us a. Um, See what they lost on. All right. You want to make sure you put that light? Yeah, light if you don't mind, that would be great. Yeah, no, I agree. It's, 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 it's right behind me. Uh, oh, I'm like, I'm turning things up. <laughs> Oh, that's a nice uh, thing. Thank you, Sasha. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, like the more comparative more budget more into that season, you know, it gets done. Certainly are. So I think. So if you want to start, do you want to do the fire departments or do you want to do all of them? I'll go in order if you want to do all of them that I'm involved in. Yeah, why don't we start with all of them? On page four, all right. at the bottom of the page, we have animal control. Yeah. Um, I put in, uh, it was 2000 for last year. I brought it up to 2500. That just, it's been staying busy and it takes a lot of time to, to go out when it's always the middle of the night. It's never never midday. It's always late at night. Did, did we ever get the new ordinance? So we have gotten it back from the lawyer, and they changed it a lot from what VLCT had. Um, so that might be something that you guys want to look over. Um, if Sasha, if you can send it to them. Yeah. I looked it over myself, and there's there's a lot taken out. Are you a lawyer? Yes. We had Ron Shams look at it, and I used the uh, the template from VLCT to do it. And there's a lot of that stuff from VLCT taken out by the town lawyer. And I'm not a, a legal jargon guy, so I don't understand all of it. But it seems to make sense. I think it just dials back our liability to put it. All right, so why don't we go ahead and take a look at that. Um, as far as uh, I'm a patrol officer, do you um, do you have a log every time you go out? Uh, I do. I do a, uh, a copy every time. 
Uh, I don't have it with me today. Yep. Um, I'm guessing this year I've probably done 15 to 20, I'm thinking, roughly, off the top of my head from how thick the, the stack was. And how often, I mean, how long is it on average? It takes generally right around two hours, you know, portal to portal, from home back to home. Right. So I gotta come out, find the animal, or pick it up from somebody, and either bring it to Warren, to Roy's, or in, in the case of our, our common denominator person, bring it back to their home. And uh, so it takes, it takes some time. So, so this 2500 that includes mileage to it? Uh, you bill separately from that? I do. Um, and it was 500 last year and I kept it at 500. Okay. Okay. Because I mean, just, I mean, looking at it, say if you did 20 calls, um, that's 40 hours roughly. Um, that's 6250 an hour. Good way to look at it. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not against it. I just put it in that way just because it's, you know, it, it certainly, I can go a couple months without anything and then it seems like in a week I have three of them in a row. Right. And some of these are after hours and on weekends, right? They're mostly after hours and on weekends. I, I very rarely have a daytime. I had one or two at the school during the day, but other than that, it's it's always like eleven o'clock at night or something like that. Oh, it is. It's yeah, eleven. Like last night, I actually went and did a we'll call it pro bono. The state police called me to Duxbury to ask for my help because Duxbury didn't have an ACO. I went and did it. That's a that's on me though. That's my own yeah. my own just helping out no, that's, them. That's nice. Um, but they called at ten thirty last night for it. It was twelve thirty by the time I got home. Yeah. And that's pretty common for when they happen. It's usually somebody driving home at eight, nine o'clock at night and you see a dog running down the roadway. Yeah. If you could at the end of the year though do an annual do an annual report for us. Yeah, absolutely. Um maybe even something so we can put in the um, town report. Absolutely. If you don't mind. And so, um, no, we, yeah, it's, it's people, would be, people would be interested in knowing that and then it can validate the, the right way that they've talked about it because we don't know what you're doing and how often you're doing it. Um, okay, we're we're yes. All right, so the next one. And then on the next page was the mileage for it. It was at 500 last year. I kept it the same. Yep. Uh, da, da, da. And then on page uh, six, uh, E911 supplies, I kept that the same. I didn't use it all, so it could go down to a thousand. I kept it the same just because it's, you know, it's good business. Just the yeah, business. Yeah. And then we go to page seven, and that's the start of the fire department. Um, You can kind of look that over. There's a few things that I brought up. You see that the stipend is um, doubling from 1500 to $3,000. Uh, it's staying the same from last year. It was 3000 last year. All right. It was, it was 2021, it was 1500 and we moved it to the 3000 last year. And you used. Um, you use fourteen hundred. What do you generally? So what I've been doing with the direction of the guys at the fire department, I've been using some of that to buy them apparel, buy them t-shirts and hats and such, and then the rest of it at the end of the year, all the people who've been you know successfully active, done thirty three percent between calls and, and trainings and stuff, get their cut. So basically, I take. The number of people that are eligible and the amount of money left, and I cut down a check for that. And how many people usually make that cut? Uh, there's ten that make the cut this year, so it, it ends up ends up being like 150 bucks a person or something along those lines, which isn't isn't much, in, but it, they you know 
Yeah, it's appreciated because they don't plan on getting anything. Right. Yeah. So like a little, yeah, a little present. Bonus. Yeah, exactly. I do it. I do it at our annual meeting. So that, you know, it's the time where we see them all, and yes, nice. it's a way to thank them for for what they've been doing over yeah. the last year. Are you generally pleased with the um, response that you get from? people during the day like you know you have a fire here in town or I'm I am they've you know it's harder during the day and any any fire department volunteer type thing but it's it's been really good we have um okay there's Sean and I that are at the highway department yeah and we have one of the guys works at the store a couple of them work right in Waterbury so if anything of you know real sustenance comes in they come over it's it's a pretty good response for during the day. We're, we're very lucky in that aspect. Um, obviously I can always use more guys. And that's one thing we're working on is trying to figure out a good way to, to put out recruiting. And yeah. It's, it's a dying Have you had anyone thing. new recently? Um, we did just have somebody, they made their three meetings, but they go away for the winter. So they made their three meetings, joined the fire department. Um, it was Riley from up on Lynch Hill. Hmm. He wanted to join and he did. And then we had one about six months before that and then probably a year before that was our last one. Yeah. So we're slowly, you know, there's still people interested. And we've had a couple that have come to a meeting and been like, uh, maybe not because they can't. We, uh, we require three consecutive trainings to get voted on that way. We know that they're interested in not right. just there to get a, a light on top of their car so they can be cool or anything like that. And that seems to be a good way to do it. And some people, they come, they see what we're doing, and they're like, oh, I, you know, it's not really for me. And I try to work with them to find a, you know, a position that they're comfortable with, whether it be, you know, operating the engine on the truck or, or getting on a roof if that's what they like. But most people don't like that. Right. And so it's... We have a few people that are good interior inside the building and good exterior outside the building doing support positions. So we certainly could use more of them, but we we have a really solid, dedicated group of people there. Certainly, you, I don't know when's a good time to recruit, but you know, be putting it out there on our media stuff that we have. You know, either on the town uh, web page. Um, front porch form. Just, hey, have you ever thought about oh, right. come down and, and give it a try? Yeah. Or more fest next year. Now, we, usually more fest is interesting because people do ask, you know, how the fire department's doing, how's the membership, and it, it gives us our opportunity to say, well, we're always, we're there on the first and third Tuesday of every month, mm -hmm. come down, check it out. Maybe a little hand out or I think a most people, it's not a bad idea. Most people think, Oh, the fire department, that means you got to run inside a burning building. Well, with the construction of fires nowadays, the running inside the burning building is far less common because they, they cook so fast. Yeah. And thankfully, with all the, the common safety features, people are warned sooner so they can get out. You should think about consider having um, maybe a, a little open house, you know, take some of your money that you've been donated or something, buy pizza or something. You come with a, you know, usually food will get people to go to things. Yeah. We're and actually talking about maybe this winter trying to do a, a little movie night on the wall of the fire station for for some younger kids. But you get the parents there too, and right. We've we've been working on ways to to branch out to the community a little bit better. Um, yeah. Just you know something to get the community out. You know we do our Halloween thing where we're in the fire station. We do coffee and. Uh, hot chocolate for the parents and candy for the kids. And... Okay, what's so the... we had a turn on. No, I think this is what's the little red light in front of that? So we put the, the little red different? light. October is fallen firefighter. Okay. So the little red lights show that our support to the to men and women that fallen oh, the fire. Okay. Oh, yeah. And they well, look so nice. I might even keep them on after that. Yeah, that'd be a nice thing to put. Maybe just put the front porch falls. Which I had every yeah. intention on doing and just. Right. I've been driving by going, wow, I don't know what that light's for. Now I do. No, thank you. That's really nice thing. Yeah, light up the night. I think those are the things to do. 
Uh, so yeah, anyways. dispatching yeah. service is going up 5,000, you think? So I think they said roughly it was going to be a 4% hike this year. And, and that's not solidified yet. Uh, so I figured that was, that's a good number to put in there. Obviously with dispatching services, it's subject to, to change once yep. they find it out. But I think that that's a fairly accurate number. All right, um, building maintenance, that's going up. Just yes, so our, our outside lights are non-functional and I can't get parts for them anymore. And one of the domes fell off from, and rusted off. So we're gonna need some, some new lights on the front of the building. And amongst other small, small oh, things, yep. our, our door is having some issues. We had some, some rodents eat the side of our door. And you said that, yeah. Which I, I believe I have eradicated them with a have a heart trap and relocated them to buy Tom's house. No. You said that the dispatching is going to 5%, but this is actually a 25% increase. From 20 to 25? Yeah. So I put that in there because I knew it was going up and I'm not a not much of a numbers guy. But also, um, there is dispatching services that's gonna be, we have to bring our communication system up. That's what the letter of intent I had I don't know, a month or two ago, that they're gonna be bringing that up. And I don't know if they're planning for this budget cycle to start putting that amount in or not either. So I just, I know that it's more, certainly. Um, I'm just not sure how much it's going to be, and I don't want to undercut the budget and be yeah. over by it, it, a it lot. Just may, maybe something we'll have to look at. Maybe. Yeah, absolutely. And I can get, they haven't gotten actual numbers out for next year yet. So I'm kind of rolling with. with yeah, because I mean, a 4% would be roughly $800. Right. And that's a $5,000. So. Right. Um, no, and, and that makes makes sense to me. But it's good to have a number to start with anyways. Yeah, I was, I was trying to have a number in there. And you may get further information to help clarify what- Yeah, what absolutely. Is. This isn't, yeah, this isn't like necessarily set in stone by any means. Um, so everything else, we got a uh, telephone okay. that's looking all the same there, and that's electric a little up and oil uh, up as well. But that's yeah, I was looking at where we're at in the budget, so I tried to adjust them you know, accordingly. Train page. Um, so the second column here, uh, fire equipment, looks like it's increasing uh, what, almost $7,000, is that right? Yes. Uh, so the radio repairs and maintenance, that's going up. Like everything else, the cost of radios has gone up. And I'm working, um, we're going to be going to digital in the very near future. And that'll be a lot of money. So I'm trying to start, as my radios are starting to die out, I'm trying to make sure I get radios that are digital el eligible radios. So that we're not buying new radios in two years, they're obsolete. How many how many radios do you have in service? In service currently, um, we have five mobile units, and then we have seven portable units. And the portable units are a mix of some some newer that are like four years old, and we just replaced one of the older ones this year with a new one. I'm trying to just keep those cycling, you know, one or two a year, along with a couple pagers, mm -hmm. to try to, to try to, you know, keep up with it without asking for a lot of money to replace the whole, the whole shebang. And supplies expenses, um, we have five hundred budgeted in twenty twenty two, and you're asking for six thousand. Yes, that is uh, for a portable pump. We keep one on each truck because you have to be able to get down to some of these water spots to get water to, to pump up to the truck so you can't get the truck close enough. And the one I'm trying to replace is old enough so you have to wrap the uh, 
the cord around it, pull it, and then if it doesn't start, you have to wrap the cord again. It's far older than I am, and you have to be careful when you're trying to turn it off. You have to pull the cover off the spark plug to get it to turn off. Yeah. And it's it's an aged unit, and I got a rough budget number of uh, $4,500 currently for the cost to replace it. Now, what truck would that go on? That would replace the one that's on engine one. I have the newest one that we currently have on our tanker, just because that's the most likely truck to need it right. in a pin. So if you were getting a new tanker, could you take that one and put it on engine one? And, and theoretically not have one on that new tanker right. because it can pump its own water? That is a possibility. It absolutely is. Um, obviously, there's still the chance that it could be far enough away that we'd still need a portable pump, but... Probably half a million dollar pumper from that. <laughs> you know, no, it's going to go wherever we want it to go. No, no that, because that is two years away anyways. The, the new, you said the lead time one, that was even after we approved it. Right. I, so that would be March of 25 that we would have a new tanker. If and I, I'm not saying, you know, that pump does still work the old one. It does still work. And I certainly, I, I'm trying to figure out when the best time to start replacing stuff is. Yeah. It's been a while since we've been replacing that stuff. And I'm, you know, maybe this isn't the year. It's still in working order. But let's keep so it there now about, anyways. But let's, that's one of those mind. things where we may have them. If you're looking, looking to money, cut a little thing, some other yeah. And yeah. yeah, no, that's that's perfectly fine too. I just it's trying to find the best time to, no, to replace I, I, things before it fails that. miserably. Yeah, um, so I'm just I'm trying to be be mindful of all of that. Right, and I'm not trying to be cheap. I'm just trying to. Oh, and I understand that. I'm that's asking for a half a million dollar truck too. I I certainly understand that. All right, so um, moving down, the next column is under firemen, and doesn't seem like there's. Let's see what we got for change. Um, I went fire. What is that? Um, so that is what what I believe the line item is for. It's for some more wildland gear. We only have um, three sets of wildland coveralls with. Um, helmets and that's to help get more of those. I can get two sets with that at the 50-50 grant. The state of Vermont for rural towns does a 50-50 grant where they'll pay half and we pay half for that year. And so I wanted to have a little money set in there so I could get it. So in that gear is particular to, to what? I mean, I'm not familiar with uh, gear. So it's particular to um, wildfires, outdoor fires, basically the difference between it and our structural firefighting gear is it's a lot lighter and it, you know, being lighter, we can wear it and hike out in the woods and it offers minimal protection from getting burned. You'll get hot still and you shouldn't get burned as long as it's just a, you know, quick, flash. quick flash of fire, but Right, so well, that's what I was really getting at. Where yeah, it's it's meant for out in the woods, in the wilderness, trying to fight fire. Okay. Uh, and then the training went from 250 to 500. Um, we've been working with Waitsfield and Warren Fire Departments doing a, a training program. And it's been going really well. We're going to need to buy some some books and some literature for it. So we're all kind of trying to, to put in our piece to, to keep that program running. Sounds good. Um, vehicle maintenance repair here. I, I wasn't sure it, this is one of those depends on, I brought it up a thousand dollars, but I, it, it's one of those things I don't want to, I don't want to not have it if I need it, but it's one of those things where I, it could be cut down a little bit as long as nothing bad happens to the trucks after the year. Right, exactly. <laughs> so it's it's kind of one of those hard hard bargain things. Yep. And you'll see uh, under fire warden, I 
gave myself a 50 cent or 50 cent 50 percent hike in pay that position does not offer any mileage and i go out for that more than i go out for any other thing in the world people asking well can i burn can you look and see if it's okay for me to burn and and spending the time when somebody calls and said their neighbor's burning trash i'm spending a an enormous amount of time, even just answering phone calls from that. Now, do you keep, again, a, a, some kind of a log? I try to. That's a little harder because I get calls and such at the most random hours. But I do know just from text messages, I would be able to say that I, I probably have 100 text messages of burns this year so far. Right. Um, not every one of those is me going out and Right, I picture a couple times. Yeah, there. exactly. And, 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 you know, uh, there are certain people that'll burn once a week and they're really good about it. And then there's some people that only burn once or twice, but they have big fires and they're you know, for it. And it's, it's hard to keep track of all those just because I spend so much time. Because I try to be, you know, good about getting right back to them or answering them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm in the middle of doing other things and it's very hard to keep. 100% track of that. Yeah. Um, Try to come up with a system when you have just a notebook with something that you, even on your phone, there must be some kind of app where you can. I did, I did do that in 2020, I did that. And it worked well for about nine months. And then I, it just, it, it I stopped doing it. Right. It stopped working. So it's not, oh, oh, go oh, figure. Oh. <laughs> because that, again, that's one of those things that would just be nice to have that info to. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I agree. You know, just by what you do and also it really let us know what I mean. You know, that's where. Yeah, that, that's certainly one of the harder ones for me to keep track of is just, I mean, this morning, four people asked me for burn permits. Right. Whereas last week, nobody was asking for any. So it's, it's but if I someone asks you for a burn permit, there must, you must put, or I'm hoping that you, there's some kind of documentation for that. That so, so if the, the house goes down or whatever happens that, you know. The, right, so the state of Vermont, for the wildland program, yeah. only requires that I give verbal permission, but oftentimes what I'll try to do is I'll try to contact um, Capital West Dispatch and just say, hey, I have a burn permit in this area. Which also doesn't always happen, and no, I don't always keep documentation of every person that's burning, as I probably should. But that is uh, that's an enormous right. I, I'm just for liability reasons. It's you know one of those things where, but I get um, but as long as you speak or somehow communicate it, I guess that obviously the the, uh, the state's fine with it. So I mean, I'm fine with it, but right and um, and. That's one of those places where, yes, I need to do better, and I, I certainly strive for that. And I just, know, just I, I, I get a lot going on. And oh no, no, no. sometimes though, it's good. Away from me. You know, to, to take a little bit off your shoulders is if you know these people, just say, hey, uh, text me, give right. me a verbal, text me. That's what and that's what I try to do. Just to have something, well, I just want something exactly on record that. We've yeah, talked. Uh, a lot of people, I get a lot of email and a lot of text messages. So that's that's good, but I do still get the, the first timers that call me. Oh yeah, no, I mean, and then, and then they ask, oh, how does it work? And I'm like, well, if it's easier for you, when you want to burn, you text and ask, and then I'll right. text them back with a yes, no, or maybe not, or what? Don, else? you had a comment, Ron? Well, uh, you know, maybe one of the things to, and certainly not do now, because we're dealing with the budget, but to that, to that issue about people requesting burn and burn permits, maybe there could be a way that, you know, someone would have to go to the town website and there's a little place you fill out a little form and when they fill it out, it gets sent to Stefan or something, you know? And, you know, not everybody will do that, but maybe, you know, if we educated people and it was on front porch form and it might take a year or two to initiate a program like that, but you could get people to, you know, boom, this is how, this is the way you got to get a burn permit in town, you know, it's dry, climate, you know, whatever. Something to think about. There might be some policy like that yeah. you could come up with. Right, so, so but again, you know, I'll we'll start adding layers on and make No, no, I understand, no, I'm going to work for him, but just that he would get, then get something, a form, right. the address, you know, I want to burn on October 3rd and, you know, whatever. Yeah, I think that there's a value in that, that way the neighbors 
Well, no, that, you know, if they see something going on, they, you know, we'll take, they can check and see if there's a burn permanent. Or yeah, you know, so, yeah. not happen to cause anyway. Right. right. No, that's that's something to think about. Yeah. But, yeah. 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 It's one of those things where we're just transitioning now from the call it the Wild West. When I took over, <laughs> I would uh, I'd get voicemails and it would be heard somewhat inaudible and burning today. Why? Well, it's not quite. That's not quite how it works. I don't know who you are. And then I show up. Oh yeah, I called the fire warden. Well, I am the fire warden. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how we got misconstrued here, but it didn't. It wasn't quite like that. All right. So we got you down for uh, more pay there too. God, we're gonna we're gonna have to go to you for Rockefeller uh, Stefan here. Mark a couple of scraps with all the money you're gonna make here. Right. Right. Um, so that is page seven. And that's that was eight. eight. Yes. That's it for the and that is where my my budget and is going into into the next phase. And I, I don't know, believe as long as I did well. I went from fifty six two fifty to sixty seven five fifty. What's that? I went from fifty six two fifty. Oh, this is. This was my writings. I don't know if I just actually the summary of, of what you put. That just yeah, that just I added all up oh, okay. all all the budget at the end, which also includes a line item I'd like to add. I don't know if that was added in. Wait, the, so seven? Uh, would you say sixty-seven? Fifty-six to sixty-seven is that? Uh, fifty-six to fifty. Fifty-six to fifty. To sixty-seven five fifty. Okay. Which also includes a new line item I would like to add this year. It's for equipment testing. Uh, that'll be for trucks, hoses, ladders. Um, and I'm looking for a new line item with $5,500 in it. And my reasoning behind that was, I found out this year that annually, under NSPA standards, you're supposed to test your hoses, ladders, and pumps. And it's something that I haven't done because I didn't know it existed. And it's something that really needs to be done is to make sure the hoses are all safe and the pumps are, are in good working order. And I got a rough budget number and it was uh, basically $4,000 for all the hoses. And then it was $300 per truck pump. So somebody, an actual tester comes out and, yes. and certifies this stuff? Like yes. That. Seems like we had that. We've had that done before. It, it has been done. So when I called the company, they're like, "Oh yeah, we have you in our system." It's been quite a while since you've used us. I just I didn't know it was such a thing. Yeah. And I, I it certainly is something that needs to be done, especially now because it's been so many years. I don't know what kind of shape the hoses are or are not in. And I didn't know it was a yearly thing. It. It is a yearly thing. What a couple of the departments around are doing, like Waitsfield and Warren, they're they did the same thing that I'm trying to do. They initially got everything tested, but then they worked on a on a rotating thing. So like we do the ladders and pumps one year, and then the next year we do the hoses. We won't be in 100% compliance, but it's a lot better than not doing it at all. Right, and based on our record so far. There's no one around checking it, so um, right. Well, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But and it's good to get it to get it done. It gives you know a lot of peace of mind to what the shape of the equipment is. You know, they'll they'll be able to tell us. There'll be a spreadsheet that'll tell us what age the fire hose is, what kind of condition it's in, and whether or not you know the life expectancy is. My understanding will be part of it, like how much longer it lasts based on the amount of use it gets. Is it an independent lab or is it somebody that sells fire hoses? I mean, <laughs> they do not you know, sell. They do not sell, sell fire hoses. Yeah, they certify the yeah, yeah, Good question. They're, they're, they're 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 very, sell. very good question. Uh, my understanding from this company is all they do is test those. They don't sell a darn thing. Yeah, that, that's except right. for the hose test. They have an independent. Yes. Somebody that's not going to be right. No. Service I mean, units. That's yep, that's yep. a very good point. You know. And no, my understanding is that they are, uh, they only do testing. 
And the company that I talked to does Northfield, Wakefield, Warren, okay. Waterbury. So they yeah. do all the towns around us. Okay. And they seem like decent people from talking to a couple of the other fire chiefs. It's, it's an important thing to have done. And I certainly agree with it being done. And it's, it's one of the more important to me items this year. So we'll take that into heart because that is a, uh, just looking at it real quick, that's a 20% increase over last year. Yes, so I. That's fairly, you know. And, it, but it, 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 it there's, there's, there's room too for trimming. Mm -hmm. I certainly agree that there's room for trimming. Um, but, you know, you don't go in trying to undercut yourself either. No, I agree. Um, and we're not, we'll see where we, you know, go through with the rest of the budget where things end Absolutely. up and see where there's, there's things we need to talk, re talk about. Um, one of the things that I just, Seth and I were talking the other day, and one of the things we did talk about is if the fire truck um, passes uh, with the vote here on November, in November uh, 2nd, 2nd or 3rd, 2nd? 8th. 8th. That's right. Yeah, it's so late. So late. So anyways, when that passes, um, that we need to really either get a, I'm not going to call it a committee, but um, this would be one of the largest um, purchases that we make as a town for a piece of equipment. Yeah. And, and no disrespect to just one person kind of doing that. Um, we need to figure out and have, and have uh, pre-bid meetings with anyone that is interested in any of the manufacturers so we can all we can sit around the table and figure out all right how is it going to be spec'd out and, and what it what it is just so we can ask other questions have other people from the fire department and if we have if, if we know someone that's you know this is their specialty then I mean, we can talk to them and have them look at our um, our deal because I want to make sure when we, we do this that we absolutely get the best deal. Uh, if you know we're going to go ahead and spend that type of money, you know, there needs to be certainly more than my eyes on it. And, and I I agree. I would you know it's an audit of of me, which I absolutely would respect. There's possibly something I miss. Right. And you, know, you, I, don't I, wear, you don't want a truck that it gets here and everyone says, yeah, well, it'd be great. If only had this one thing, it could do all sorts of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like that, exactly. You know? That's in, um, I certainly, I spent a lot of time building the spec, so I'm 100% sure that right. there's, I certainly could have missed something. I don't, I've heard from the manufacturers of small things that right. and that's they don't, don't spec well together, yep. which that makes perfect sense to me. I I worked really hard on it, but nobody's perfect. Oh, no, 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 I understand and, that. And I love the idea of it being looked over. I just, I want it to be looked over, but I want it also to not drag on, because I know most of the- Oh, no, no, that's not, that's not the, the idea. The idea is to move yeah, it a little. little team effort. Right, but- Right, yes, exactly. And in that 30 days after it is a prime time to start talking to those people. Or, right, and- once you have that vote, you'll have a lot more um, cooperation with manufacturers too, as far as getting some help and uh, for them. Because once they for the three hundred and fifty thousand dollars of voters, <laughs> yeah, exactly. They got to be close to that number, and so you know if they know there's money on the table, they're going to come and service. But you know, anyone just stopping in one of the prices, they're probably less giving you the time and information that you need, so. The three that I've worked with so far, three different manufacturers, yep. they've been good about getting back to me and, and explaining what they think doesn't work about my spec. Yep. Which may, you know, some of it makes sense, some of it doesn't. Some of them didn't like my, uh, my requirements on the length, I was trying to keep the truck short for all the skinny driveways and such that we're getting into. And, you know, they were like, well, we can do it, but it would be three inches longer than that. Right. <laughs> All right, well, that's... Well, so it's, it's a lot of things like that. You know, I was, yeah. trying, I was trying to do what made the most sense, both economically and as far as firefighting goes. Oh. 
No, I think you, I'm sure you did a great job. You did. You it, but it's a lot of money, and I, I, I thought the same thing when I was like, wait, where's the, where's the gold plated stuff? We can't get those out now. Yeah. And but the checks and balances, it's good to have. And well, and it, we'll make sure. Then it, you know, it's it shows better transparency, and then yeah. it's not me when the truck comes and it doesn't do everything. It's not just me that's going down, the whole ship's coming down. Yeah, there you go. There's <laughs> another way to look at it as well. well the way other way to look at it is that we all find something and go, oh, well, maybe why does it have this or does it really need that you know, or something right. like that. Why does that need to be so shiny or what? You know? <laughs> I already got rid of the nice wheels. Okay. And I got rid of the huge motor too, trying to, trying to cut costs down. Great. So we want to move along, Stefan. So unless there's anything else that we can help you with tonight, I don't think so. Right. I still still like that ladder track, but all right, we'll keep it that. We'll keep that in mind. Yeah. Um. So go ahead, stop. Yeah. I just gotta say, maybe about a tanker they throw in the ladder truck. Yeah. Every uh, that. Yeah. Maybe they'll do that. <laughs> Berlin. <laughs> Berlin has a nice big ladder truck for sale cheap. But it's, uh, it would never fit in our station, so <laughs> it's out of the question. <laughs> oh, so yeah, that's easy. We can just build you a new fire station, right, Ray? Well, we build the highway department a new station. It would fit in that shop. So we'll just move you down there. <laughs> that's the plan. <laughs> yeah, leave now. <laughs> Once you move out of that building, though, then the land goes back to someone else, right? It has to be a fire, it has to be a fire station. Yep. That could be outpost number one or something. Right, yeah. <laughs> All right, Sasha, what do you got for us here for reports? Um, I had a call this week, a resident that lives on Route 2, um, concerned about the new paving because people are going faster, so I guess that's Don John's department. Um, just wanted to voice his concerns. And so, so is that something at some point um, when you're talking with the sheriff or you're communicating back with them? Yep. yep. Just make them aware of that. Look at with the new asphalt. Yep. Uh, there seems to be an uptick in speed, which there would be. I mean, that was. Sure. Yeah. Do you know where they're where they're located? Where it's it's not... near the old noise property, um, kind of by the down by the um, what's the boys and. Yeah, boys council. Oh, that also see that. So we had that discussion with them. That was the when they changed the speed limit as you get to Gallagher Acres and Fairground. You know, they dropped the speed there to thirty-five, and I attended that meeting, and there was discussion. You know, I figured maybe John was there as well about how we would go about the next steps to going about getting that to thirty. They have to lower it. Anyways, it's it's something that can be done, just like we just did. You get it, you get it on the agenda, and you there's a committee that reviews speeds. They do a study, and I mean it's something we could work on. John, I kind of working on that transportation thing. All right. So I will uh, will keep it on the between that and you getting the your buddies over there. Um. Deborah Feldman has a concern about the stop sign. I forwarded that to you guys this afternoon. Um, Fire and Road doesn't have a stop sign. She's had it ever had one, or I don't doesn't think sound like ever being one there. Probably yeah. not. Being a dead end the road yeah, stuff, but, but it does go all the way through. Yeah. So she said GPS is bringing a lot of traffic up that class four road. I'm sure of that. So then, in the, obviously, in the winter it stops, right. but you know, where someone gets stuck. Too. Right. Uh, so I think as a town, then we can, that's something that we can just yeah, put I up. Yeah, we can just put a stop sign up. Why don't we go ahead and do that? I don't think that's a bad idea. Is there anyone here? Sorry, because I'm going to to mow around it or something, or plow around it. Oh, I, that's no. not the big deal. The, uh, the signs are very expensive. It's like three or four hundred bucks, and then to get that sign in place. That's but it, it is it is a need for for sure. Yeah, if they're flying through, I can see where that would happen. And, then, and they don't realize that it's a stop. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Should be 
sure obvious to some people, but probably not. I mean, when people come down the other way, Howes Road, is that, was there a stop there? Yeah. Yes, there is a stop there. Yeah. 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 That's where I originally was thinking that she was thinking on that side of the road, but it's yeah, on the other side. Yeah, the cutoff section. No, she wouldn't think people would. And there is one on the other side, there right Farnham Road, but not on, not on the Howes Farmer side. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. funny? I, I, I'm fairly certain. I think I've, I think I've motored around it with a that's what she to look at too. She wasn't sure if there was one on the other end, but hmm. I, I think there was. And then the other question I have is um, there's just seeing all these bills come in for oil, cocaine, sand, it's here, it's just it's skyrocketed. Um, what about putting this stuff out to bid? I just put invoices in today for off-road diesel and it was five grand just September and yes. through October. I thought we, I mean, we, I mean, we had put it up with, with yeah. We haven't done anything with that since I've been in the position. Not with a few. That's interesting. I thought we didn't do anything with that in years. You know what you should do, maybe, Sasha, is do you call around other towns? Mm -hmm. um, kind of find out what they're doing and what they're paying right now. Um, and certainly a competitive environment is something we uh, foster here. But let's get that information and then figure out, um, probably now is not the time we want to go throw a bid out for, yeah. for this, but uh, for next year, yeah. I think there probably should be something that's sent out in the spring that's looking for these, uh, these things, but just to make us feel better, why don't you call around to see what everyone else is at? Okay. Please. Yep. And I'd love uh, a bid for different sand. If you can find somebody else close enough for different sand, we'd love to get another bid on that. Yeah, Martin stopped in today and was talking about that. Maybe something from Northeast might be comparable because I guess she went up last year by a dollar fifty and he was only anticipating fifty cents. Right, it's the same old sand that's sitting there. But... Yeah. Because <laughs> the trucking costs are even more well to bring the sand. Yeah, no, I yeah, understand. because of the oil and the fuel. Yeah, dollar fifty a yard is a significant yeah, and you can see some of that going up in the yard because there's yard work they're crushing it or screening it and things like that. But it seems because it's only six or right, how much the, what what's the percent? Ten or but it's, it's I don't remember what that's it's a fairly was. large percent. It is increased. Yeah. yeah, it could be because it was around eight fifty and now you say yeah. it's ten. Yeah, it's uh well over ten percent. All right, so, yeah. Okay. And the last thing I had was to remind you about an email. Oh, yeah, yeah, but I, I wrote that down, so when I get to that, I'll... That's all I have. Right? Uh, I don't know. This is this is probably old business. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to talk about with the ARCA committee meeting. Um, yeah, let, let's do that on old business, just because we have that on the yeah. old business. Yeah. yeah. Right? I'm great. Um, that we're on um, reports and communications? Yep. Yeah. Um, no. Good. Good. Oh, I got to leave it all in the board now. All right. So um, the email that Sasha was talking about, uh, I got a communication from uh, Dan Zucker. And I'm going to say this was a little while ago. I think the first one was in the, um, late August, uh, pardon me, September. Um, and he has a neighbor that has removed uh, a pin, a uh, survey pin, mm. and is doing some work. Um, the neighbor has uh, clarified to him that he did, in fact, move the pin because it was going to be in his way. Um, so, obviously, and Dan's tried to work with him as a neighbor to try to get him to have it replaced. But does anyone, as a town, is that in our jurisdiction to? Uh, Replace them? Well, not replace them, but to send out a letter to the owner to, to, have, to have it replaced. Uh, statute would mm -hmm. say that that person who's uh, removed the pin 
is subject to a hundred dollar fine, which is stupid. Um, yeah. We're gonna do a fine, do a real fine, and cost of replacing a pin, you know, with a certified. Um, that's a statute. That's one. Of the, that's a statute. Oh. So I think. I mean, I don't think I ever recall it going to them like that. But I don't see why we want this reference that statute. And, all right, so we'll have them send a we'll send a letter out and um, hmm. yeah, or do we? Or we, do we, we we need to because then it gets you in to to it was not I don't just you know disbelieve what Dan Duckett has ever said to me that, it, but um, again it kind of puts us in. Yes, yeah, that's true too. Uh, arbitrator or such when you know this guy, his neighbor says, "I didn't." So is that what the neighbor is saying? Well, no, no, well, the neighbor out. has not said that. The neighbor yeah. said to him that he pulled it out, but he might tell us that he has it, right? It, probably, maybe it's something we should. It should be a neighbor. The neighbor so, calls the police and does no, it that way. Right? A neighbor and two neighbors talking to each other, maybe and figuring yeah. it out. We well, ask good. them both to come into the select board meeting, and we can, you know, yeah. like, okay, you want to talk about this, boys, or you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know I get those involved. Yeah, that's, I don't know. And what's ironic is this is someone who, you know, has emailed us about other, you know, violations, that, you know, of other people down the road, not this particular guy, but <laughs> other his neighbor. So, you know, he's a picky person, but then he feels like he can. Uh, you know, do what he wants. Hmm. You know, maybe I should, it would be worth a quick call uh, to Ron to get his advice on, all right, which is the best way to handle this? Yeah, sure. sure. If that's all right with everyone. Yeah. Um, I understand uh, the neighbor not trying to get things riled up, but you know, I don't know if it's it's our uh, purview to be there. So, um, that's all I have for uh, communications re reports out. We have the select board minutes from 10 um, 3 2022. Does anyone have a motion on this? I make a motion. Do you have a I'll second, sure. Thank you, Don. Uh, all in favor, go aye. 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 Oh, I, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. There's only three of us here. I know, no, I, I, I'm sorry. I was, just, I was thinking of something else. So like, all right, I was really thinking of these nuts. <laughs> all right, what are you doing? All right, okay. so Ray, you had some old business for us? Uh, just want to update you. Um, you should do that kind of email with this uh, kind of draft of a list of items that the uh, committee has talked about, uh, which only a couple we've only got. Uh, you know, the CD fibers, that's going to be on the uh, town of architect, architects is going to be on the, I think the, uh, the select board, 100,000, 100,000, is going to be on. Um, some other items that, you know, for instance, the uh, Mad River Valley Senior Citizen, uh, the guy that was here last year, right. wanted 10,000, he came to the meeting, uh, and all of this uh, request of five. Uh, but what we were thinking of as a committee, um, because we, we we don't think that this is the old matter of values when the only person with this problem. We were thinking of just coming up with a lump sum amount. Uh, I think we came up with like thirty thousand that we would use to just instead of just singling out matter of value for five thousand, um, kind of consolidate stuff and. Come up with one number and that you know that we would use. I don't know the exact wording, uh, but it'd be on in the lines of helping out the senior citizens meals on wheel program if they're over budget. Not for like Waterbury, uh, Montpelier, Council of Aging, you know, group them all together. But uh, again, these are all items that you know they're going to come to the select board with these numbers, and it's up to us to make that ultimate decision. Yep. And whether we as a board feel that this is the correct use for that money. It's something we, we should be thinking about. Okay. Well, I, yeah. get my, I guess. 
Um, freewheeling is, you know, if you don't know, they they go around and uh, help seniors get to uh, their appointments and uh, other things like that. That's what freewheeling does. I I wasn't aware of them. So they're asking for ten thousand. So uh, sometime I told them we need really like to have this, you know, early December, you know, some some more finalized plan. And so we kind of put it out that uh, I think on front page forum, if you haven't seen it, that anybody that any organization or anybody that thinks they are eligible for money from the town, we're setting a deadline of um, this end of this month. I saw there's a meeting on the 26th next week. Yeah, I think it's like, that's a kind of deadline, and then we'd like to have everything by that time, and then that'll give us a little bit of time to think about what the recommendations to the board should be. Does anyone know, I, it's funny, I just saw where Warren is just now putting together an opera committee. Hmm. Um, Sasha, maybe you could do a little research and find out <coughs> what other towns are doing with the, with their funds um you know as it's going gearing up you know we're seeing a lot of more organizations coming out of the um I don't know, woods but just yes. kind, of, kind yeah. of like with their hand up um because they should so, so let's just see you know maybe even on a this might be something that we need to discuss with other towns you know because i don't want to be the only town putting in for one organization and not have other towns, and I'm sure they feel the same way, kind of yeah. reciprocity. That's a good point. And something that's, um, you know, that we're all doing. That. Like, yeah. um, you know, mm -hmm. sort of like how in the ambulance, you know. Exactly, when I came, you know, and having the percentages, let's make sure it's all fair for, for everyone so no one feels like they're being shut out or not taken Correct. care of. Yep. Um, so if we can do a little right look into that, Stefan, what do you got? Uh, on the moment with the ambulance, uh, Mark Podrick, the gentleman yeah. that came in here, he passed away during surgery this uh, this last weekend. Get out of here. That, that was that weird. The guy that was here with uh, with Maggie asking about oh, really? about getting in, he was he was undergoing a fairly routine surgery and he ended up bleeding out. I guess that's awful to hear. And I just figured you guys want to know that, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. They're trying to figure out their organization right now because he, you know, he led it and was a director. And so oh. just, just so you guys, so if you don't hear anything from them, you might try to reach out to them because they, they might be in a little yeah, bit of a card or something. The organization or, or condolences. It's really oh, cool. His family. Yeah, it was. Their, it was a. It was not expected. So it. No, it, he was a lively guy. Yeah, he just. Uh, I mean, he was working uh, the week before. And then he went into surgery and it just didn't go well, I guess. Well, that's understatement. Um, well, well, thank you for sharing that. No, that's I just, I, it, but, you know, it could, it's a sad thing and, you know, we're all a community and yeah, he was, he was a very lively guy and he had a yeah, good no, sense I, of humor too. Yeah, no, I, short times I was involved in him around and he's, that was what I call him black, you know, he yeah. had a lot of energy. And he was very passionate for what he was doing. Yes. You know. So. What was his name? Mark Poshwick. I, I couldn't tell you how to spell it if I wanted to right off the top of my head. We'll see a lot of emails that we, we get from him. Yeah. Ray, can I ask you one quick question on the, on the, uh, the neck of the woods, yet the note is put on town ballot in March. Is that, I thought, um, that's, um, I think that's just a note that. Because uh, I, I thought we already told the neck of the woods we were doing, we approved it. I don't know. You, are we going to put it to vote or something? Or I, I don't know. Yeah. So I, we told them that, yeah, it was a good thing. They're going to have the feet and the, the wheels. For, you know, the, um, I remember somebody saying, that they wanted the town input because twenty five thousand was a lot. Oh, I do remember. Or you look at the yeah. look at our yeah, we, can, we can research that. I mean, these are just notes. Yeah, no, I understand. I, I, I would look at the some old people meeting. Yeah, looked we'll at it when they came in. Yeah, so if we did come into them, then 
Because I don't know. Just something to think. Somebody ordered it to go on in November. Yeah, I think now that you it. brought it up, because one of the, they were talking about, I think I asked a question about whether it should go in November or March, right. and they were hoping it could go earlier, but they didn't really care. I think it was. Yeah, and we were stirring because of the fire truck. Right. Yeah. No, I think that was. But you, and Don, yeah, if you go ahead and go back. And no, no, I was. You just died. The best thing is to go back and watch the uh, the watch the movie. Right? Yeah, watch the movie. <laughs> Grab your popcorn and watch the movie. Yeah. So yeah, right. That would be interesting to see what how that works out. Um, very good, Don. What you are? Do you have any more of the old stuff right now? Don. Um, old stuff. Size yourself. <laughs> yes. Well, this is this is kind of an old stuff. The the, the town garage uh, yes. sand pit, right? It's yeah. you know gravel pit. Where else are you? Going to Amazingly, that I got this thing in the mail the other just the other day, and the property that uh, we looked at as a town as the select board back when we were thinking about relocating the town garage and the. Sand pit out by Boyd, uh, uh, water access. It's not a yeah. What was her name? Uh, it, uh, what? Near uh, Linda? Oh, yeah, just there. after Linda Van Times, that house right there. Okay. Is, on, is for sale again. So, um, or it's on the market. And my, of course, my daughter was over visiting and they went online to check it out. And it's 440000 And when we were looking at it as a town, I believe it was two fifty or two something. Oh yeah. yeah. So um, <laughs> no, no. So anyways, you know, anyway, this, you know, it's just no one's gonna decide about it right now. But maybe when you're driving around or thinking about it, it's, there's not a lot of places for us to move our town garage and sand pile if we ever want to move it out of town. Building a wastewater system, having that beautiful access to the river. Right. Well, we can't move the fire station now to the town garage. Since once you told me about that, we have to stay at the fire station there. Yeah. But, um, it could still be called a fire station. The library it could will be have a, a fire station. No, it work. could be a apartments. You know, we could convince whoever it was that we could make housing here. But in any event, uh, so that's old, new thought. You know, just trying to keep that little fire alive for yep. us to think about. You know, ten five year plan. Ten. Maybe we could buy it and then rent the house for a while or something. Um. And the only other thing is, I, I, I know, uh, when we get to talking about budgets and law enforcement and speed signs, because, um, you know, remember the sheriff said that uh, speed signs were too far apart and this and that. Just something to think about that if we do some of that, maybe some of the roads we can lower some of the speeds. Yeah. If we're, you know, we can steal some 35 signs from some roads and make, make new signs that. 30s or something. I don't know. So that well, you and John are working on the sign stuff, so keep that. Yeah, I mean, no, that's something we, you need yeah. we have our, we, we've gathered back some of the slow down, like your kids live here. You know, I've managed to find some of the ones that we got. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, it's getting a little late in the season to put those up, but maybe because they, you know, winter coming and plowing and stuff. But we've identified some other areas in town where we're going to try to put those up in the spring or something. So, anyways, um, any other old business? No, I'm waiting to update you all. Hopefully, at the next meeting um, about the town hall. I don't have any new news for you right now. We're just working away. All right. So, um, there's nothing new as far as bank front properties. Um, okay. That's I want you know. It's kind of in the wrong channel. It's right. It's nothing that we can do as a as a board, um, you know, uh, so Ron's working on it. He understands the uh, situation, so he's moving as quickly as he can. Um, you know, and that's one of the reasons I was bringing up the, the rental with the fade and the act fit the the uh, Airbnb thing. I think as a town, we should. 
uh, look a little bit more into what we can do for affordable housing. Um, there are, so I went on this weekend looking, I was starting looking for grants and there is a, there's a lot of grants for affordable housing out there. Um, there's a lot for people actually like Frank that have um, places in ill repair. Um, so even as, you know, if we can try to figure out something so we can do outreach with some of these people so that we can get their places up to snuff so that they can be rented out, that even might be a start. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask Sasha, <coughs> pardon me, in her free time, if you could do a little research into just what the grants are out there. I just Googled it and did, um, I think I got it into Vermont, affordable housing grants grant, and a bunch popped up, but if you could do a little research, some that might be available for our residents, um, and that's something that we can publish. A lot of people may not even know that there are things out there available for them. Uh, and then there might be things as a town that is available to us um, to facilitate buying or financing something. You know, there's some third party things that um, allow us to do that. And, and I know one of the things when the after funds came in and we were talking about, you know, what we could do, one of the things was, you know, buying that house down the old electric department thing. So maybe, can, you know, Don, if you get a moment, just, you know, send that guy an email. Again, hey, are you guys doing anything? Have you decided you're gonna do anything with this building? Um, you know, there, there may be more opportunities as we, so if we scratch the surface with it, I just think Sasha would be a good person to kind of head this up, kind of look and see, all right, what, what can we really do? Feasibly as a town. I mean, I know we're not. Yeah, I was thinking of that place uh, that he had to close down the the school there uh, just after the flower farm. What's it called? Uh, you know. Oh yeah, Stone yeah. Path yeah. Academy. What? Stone Path Academy. Yeah, I mean, there's you know now it's you know it's there's the house and there's this building that could you know I drive by and go gosh there could be three or four right. units in that place you know. Yeah, um, so, but you know, uh, all right, so that so you that is your basis. All right, there's something like that. Is there some money for town to go after something like that? If we could do something like that, right? And you know, maybe your money gives you some money that you can invest, not you know, and then somehow I don't know, but I think I you know. need to be yeah. a little creative. And the other thing is a town, I think, and I don't know what we can do. Um, about the Airbnbs, but you know, maybe it's some kind of a, a, a tags that we can put on it and um, spend towards affordable housing or something. I think they just had a meeting about this in the Maverick Valley. I mean, just the other night they had a meeting about housing. And, and did they? Yeah. Thing. Yeah. They did. Yeah. Um, and the, there's a. Um, a young woman who's moved into town, Amy uh, Tomasio, who, who works in Mad River, uh, the Mad River Valley uh, the Housing Coalition. Or yeah, or well, she works for Mad River Valley. I forget the last word of it, but you know. Um, but maybe we can invite her to come in yeah. and talk to us, you know, and see what she's found out and what she's worked on and stuff. You know, she was like just out of her. So maybe I could give her a call and get yeah, an idea about, you know. So are you thinking as a town we would help a, a developer or whatever uh, get the funding? Or, or you think as a town we would be the, the lead person? I would more your first scenario than the second. Yeah. What can we do as a town to... And then bring in experts like I know in Burlington they, there's... I, mean, I don't know what the acronyms are, but there's some groups there that the, the city has helped facilitate, right. whether it's Champlain Housing or Champlain Coalition or something like that. Right. I was reading about something where they, when I was doing the, looking for affordable housing grants, you know, these, some of these communities that receive all this money through the city, but to build and, you know, yeah. I don't know exactly how it works, but 
you know, if we don't look into it, then we won't know. And right. it, there may be uh, those opportunities. As a town, I don't think we're sophisticated enough or, or have enough employees to become manager of LA plan housing uh, managers yeah. or, or developers. But we may be able to do something as a town to take the money and yeah. pass it on to the experts and just um, help them figure out the product, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a matter of Valley Planning District that she's worked on. Yeah. So. Um, I, I think they had a meeting in like this just the other day. But, you know, and it may be nothing yeah. that we want to, to get involved in at all, but, you know, I think now's a good time as any to, to, look, at it, to yeah. look at it. And we got someone with Sasha that I think is probably capable, or is, I know is capable, and that might be something she can take on. Um, other old business, and I'm glad uh, Stefan can help us here a little bit, but when I when I was not here in the um, September meeting, did you guys did you guys talk about the road crew and the days are going back to five days or four days or we how? Did. Oh, we did. No, I don't think we did. We did. Um, that is, we we're just wrapping up on the mountain the end of last week. So we're just trying to wrap things up, but we assumed that it would be the end of this pay period would be the time probably to switch back. Because I think we had talked about the later we thing, didn't we? Right, we said, yeah. and Martin was here, I believe, uh, for a number of reasons, mine being school, yours being darkness. Yeah. Uh, Labor Day would be that time. And if there were any other mitigating circumstances to come back and you know, chat to us about it. Okay. And so maybe you could give him a call in the morning. And, uh, yeah, I will. I, I completely forgot about that last time. Yeah. But I remember having that conversation. I think it was with you or at a meeting. Yeah, no, it was at, it was at a meeting and we, because Martin brought it up. It was when he was giving us a, you know, a lowdown of what was going on and asked. And then that's what we thought, yeah. all right, this year, this is when we, what we'd like to do. And, we said there was flexibility, but we wanted to be involved in that decision. Yeah. I'll, I'll make a point to call Mark now. All right. Um, stormwater project, is there anything on that, Ray? That um, no, I, I think they were reviewing. Um, in the, they're in their final review process. I think it's still the plan is to have that out for bid in December. Okay, good. Uh, okay, I don't see anything else that, uh, for old business. Don, you got anything for new business or Ray? Well, just the, um, I haven't really gotten a chance to get into it, but the, the, um, what the planning commission said this about. Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, thank you so much. It I, looks like a little piece of work to get into right there. Yep, yeah, no, I, thank you so much for bringing that up. In fact, I talked to Sasha about it earlier. To, uh, to put a plan together, a call today. So she called um, to make sure we had the dates as far as, all right, when do we need to do this to execute public hearing? So <clears throat> we're gonna have the public hearing at uh, our second meeting in November, or no, not the next meeting, the following meeting. So that would be the second meeting, second meeting in November. In November. <clears throat> Pardon me. So between now and then, as a select board, we need to, plow through those yeah. changes. I didn't see, I mean, I, I went, went to the attachment and I saw, started to look at those zoning doc, you know, yeah. documents, but he re I thought in his email he referenced that he was going to attach something that would help us follow yeah, it or something. And I didn't see that, or maybe that's in the week as you get into the document. I don't know, I, I couldn't figure out what he was talking about. Yeah, maybe, so, so maybe you could print out what we, yeah. And have it available so each person can come and pick it up. Um, yeah, I'm not going to look it up. Yeah, you don't need to get on your phone yeah. or try to figure that out. I did the same thing and you're trying to no, check the doc. Yeah, I mean, it just that he said that there was something that we should follow while we were looking at the zoning docs that would help make it clear. But then I couldn't find what that was. But I don't know. I'll make sure that she has everything yeah. available for us. Okay. So if we want to make any. Um, big changes between now and uh, 
if you see anything, we need to talk about that because the planning commission would need to go and have another meeting as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so that we'll have that public hearing, and if there's no uh, substantive changes, then at that point um, we can push back to the planning commission, and it can go to a vote in March. So that would be the idea is to get that out in March. So we should maybe by the next meeting and. I've read it so we can just talk discuss about it to see if there's yeah, anything that we want yeah, or something that we might need explained explain. or something to think about. So, um, okay, you know, that would be great if everyone actually takes the time to yeah to read that. So if the if that'll be on the second one in November, the second meeting in November, would we? I mean, I think that's what we're kind of trying to shoot for, also to, to have this presentation from BIA, the architects. I hope that. But that'd be fine. One of these, uh, yeah, you know, this yeah. thing would be ten minutes. Yeah, and it probably would take that, unless it depends. I haven't read the changes. The right, right. You know, right. We'll, yeah. we'll decide whether we make that ten minutes or half right. an hour. But still having that other presentation at the same time, we'll have. We'll make time for that. Right. Okay. Um, so we have a few invoices here to uh, go ahead and sign off on. Um, and the health insurance. Okay, there's just one signature here. Thank you for coming, um, Stefan. Oh, we're here to see you. Absolutely. Lively crowd here tonight. Good time. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Thanks, Stefan. You know, so this is the insurance software. Okay. Ray, you've signed off on um, payroll. So will we be like looking at this again next with the next meeting budget and stuff? Uh, you, kind of where I'm going. Yeah, that's another one thing. And uh, um, I don't know how we have the first meeting in November. Yeah. I mean, we're hunting. I'll be, uh, I'll be I bought it again for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just the way the calendar worked out, this should be. Oh, that's all right. <clears throat> but, uh, I'll be sure to look at the zoning. Yeah, and if there's anything you have know, questions is that or changes or things that you think is out of line, so let us know. Just bring in some venison. Yeah. Are you a venison eater, Tom? Not really. A little occasionally, you know. Some neighbors of mine hunt on our land. And I get a little, a little bit of that. All right. Well, I guess that is it for tonight. So I move to uh, adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you, everyone.